Okay, so now you have decided to move to the Philippines. You have researched the place you want to move to and decided to stay in one specific place. What's next? What do you like? City life? Mountain life? Or beach life? Or maybe a combination of all? The possibilities are endless here. No matter what you choose, you can always change it up in the future. Before we continue, I would ask you to subscribe like and share and comment as subscribing and commenting and liking really helps my channel grow thank you how do you get started on this life-changing move so this is what we're going to cover in this video so depending on your situation in your home country you have a few things that you need to do start by meticulously planning your move preferably six months to a year in advance Start getting rid of your stuff if you have no plans on going back. Alternative, if you have plans on going back within a year or two, you can consider putting your things in storage. Take your time selling your things to maximize your profits. Use Facebook Marketplace to sell your things. Facebook Marketplace is easy to use, it's free, and you can use it on your smartphone just a si few simple clicks and your thing will be on sale whatever you're trying to sell and you also can search in there for similar items to get an idea of the price that you can ask for for that specific item one thing some people are not aware of when coming to the Philippines from the dates you are leaving your country to the to when you arrive from the date you are leaving your country you have to have six months to expiration of your passports. So if you're leaving on January 1, you'd have to have January, February, March, April, May, June. So June 30th would be the expiration date, last expiration date. So my advice is to, if your passport is less than two years uh, to expire and you're planning on leaving soon, think about renewing your passport so you don't have that hassle when you live in the Philippines at least not for a while I would also recommend you so remember it's very important that your expiration date is no shorter than six months from the time you leave the US if it is you'll be denied entry to the Philippines they actually will not let you leave the, U the US when they look at your passport this almost happened to me Luckily, I'm dual citizen and my British passport had a longer expiration date. So I, I was able to travel on my British passport, passport instead of my uh, US passport. So this is very important. Please check your passports. Also, not a must, but I would recommend getting an international driver's license. I think in the US you can get it for like 20 or $30 just Google international driver's license where do I get it and it'll tell you where to go and what to do to get your international driver's license and they're vari valid for 12 months you can come here on your American license but having an international driver's license is nice to have I've been stopped by police and they've asked me why I don't have a Filipino driver's license it's funny to say but some of the the laws have changed so now you have to have been in the Philippines for 12 consecutive months before you can get a uh, Filipino uh, driver's license and some of the police are actually not aware of the law so I've had to explain it to them <laughs> funnily enough but having an international driver's license actually makes it a lot easier uh, next is if you have any type of medication I would if at all possible start hamstring that uh, medication meaning when you come here you don't want to run out of medication in your first three months medicine in the Philippines it's it's more expensive than in the US in the US typically we have insurance so we can get you know our 90 day prescription for maybe 30 bucks over here the medication is more expensive so a good way to save money is to take as much medication as you can with you to the Philippines but remember 
you have to declare your medicines when you arrive uh, to the Philippines and you have to have your prescription to show that your medicine is valid for you. Um, so this is important and they ask you why do you have a six month or nine month uh, medication? Tell them you plan to go other countries, many other countries before you return to the US. So I've never had a problem with this and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a problem. So again to save money if you are on certain types of medication remember to have a prescription from your doctor for all your medicines and to declare it upon landing and to take as much medicine as possible with you of course you're not going to take five years supply with you be you know six months nine months a year supply uh, one other thing I would consider is something we call Balik buy-in box and you'll see that in the background here now this is a a cardboard box that is doubled or, or tripled walled and that uh, you send from the US you fill it up with whatever you want and there's no weight limitation on it and it typically takes about two to four months to get to the Philippines from the time you send it from the US depending where you send it from the US obviously if you're in a port city it goes faster uh, they typically the Balik bind boxes come in different sizes and they vary in price from approximately 120 to around $200 depending on the size of the box and depending where you live in the US and these boxes have to be very well taped um, hopefully I can find some pictures and show you how I tape my my boxes I'm not sure if I have that or not but I'll look for those and if you see that in the background those are my boxes taped but also whatever you put inside make sure that it's very well protected um, and preferably don't put anything that is really fragile because it can break I've had a few items that have broken on the way here to save money on your travels consider uh, buying ticket in the low rate months when traveling to the Philippines you can google that and you find which months are low rates and now with the coronavirus and all that, that of course all that's changed so you'll have to google and find the cheapest flight possibles but also try to book it at least 30 days in advance and on a Tuesday Wednesday or Thursday because those are typically the lowest date but again keep googling keep searching to get those cheap tickets Another ticket you will have to buy is what we call a throwaway ticket, which is basically a ticket that you're not going to use, but it's a ticket out of uh, the Philippines, and it has to be within uh, 28 days or 29 days of uh, landing in the Philippines. Google throwaway ticket and Philippines to get the latest information on that. Typically, you can book a ticket from the Philippines to uh, Malaysia and it's about fifty to hundred dollars when you book it a few weeks in advance so y if you do not book it a throwaway ticket you will be forced to buy a ticket when you get to the first airport either Cebu or Manila wherever you land you'll be they'll you will actually have to buy a ticket out so that will be more expensive so remember to get that ticket what we call a throwaway ticket since you're never going to use it out of the Philippines now once you come to the Philippines and you've been there a couple of weeks you just go to the immigration office and you do an extension for one or two months and then you continue doing extension after extension and then after a few extensions you're allowed to extend for six months at a time so it's it's all pretty easy and there are plenty of videos out there about how to do these extensions there are two main airports that you land here in the Philippines one is Manila and one is Cebu City I have landed at both and my preference without a doubt is Cebu City obviously which airport you're going to will depend on your end destination but if at all possible go to Cebu City it's just simpler easier to get through and less hassle at least that is in my experience other people might have different experience and they can comment below but each airline has different baggage allowance so you'll have to read on your airline the baggage allowance typically international flights are two bag bags of 50 pounds and one bag that you can take uh, inside and one laptop bag 
Um, now, it's very important that you weigh these bags before you leave the house and make sure they're not above 50 pounds. I typically, when I'm moving somewhere, I have a lot with me, as much as I can take with me. It's clothes, shoes, I even had my monitor with me. So, mine, both bags weighed 49.5 pounds on the scale, so I gave it a bit of a margin. And but if you go above, these airlines will nickel and dime you. They will, I don't know how much it is, but they will charge you a lot of money because you went above. And you don't want to be at the airport, you know, moving things from one bag to another. Just make sure it's all weighed up correctly before you leave the house, and that way it'll be a nice, relaxing trip for you and not stressful. Be aware also that here in the Philippines we have 220 volts while in the US it's 110 volts. Now most electronics today are actually dual voltage so that shouldn't be a problem but please check before taking anything with you here that it is dual voltage. I've been asked uh, about finding places to rent um, in, different pl in different places here in the Philippines. My advice is very simple wherever you choose to live rent a place for a month via Airbnb and once you get here you know chill for a few days and then start looking for a long-term place make sure uh, that the place you are you've landed in you've decided to stay in that's where you want to be and get to know the neighborhoods get to know talk to other foreigners and they'll give you advice about where to live where not to live and also you'll get an understanding of the market and what the rental prices should be here, furnished, unfurnished, etc. So don't go into any long-term leases when you first land here. That's, that's a mistake that many have made. So make sure that you rent something for one or two months via Airbnb. And Airbnb you can get good deals for long-term, meaning one month or more. And... Um, so that's how I'd approach that when finding a place to live. People have also asked me about how do I meet other expats. I would start already before you leave for the Philippines. There are many groups on Facebook for different cities that you can become a member of. Just say you are moving to the Philippines and you'd like to get to know people. Then start uh, following that group, see what they're talking about, uh, come with some input, ask the questions, get to know people. People are very friendly here and they want to give you advice. They've been in your situation. Remember, they've been in the, your situation and they typically want to help. So that's the way uh, you can uh, get to know some expats. Also, there are many vloggers in different cities and you can talk to them directly um, through consultation or through email and they will help you uh, as much as they can, as much as they have time to or give you advice as where to go to get the specific advice or solutions to what you're looking for. Last but not least, I feel like I need to give some advice when it comes to women and scammers. First of all, you will be scammed, but most of it is small amounts of money, and you can basically laugh it off. I have probably been scammed for approximately $50. The bigger dangers that here that have ruined many men is the house and lot scam. Please watch my video on that specific subject. Another advice I would give you is do not meet any girls, women at the airport. You are moving here. Be single for at least six months to a year, preferably a year. Date and meet plenty of girls to understand the dating scene and what are your choices here. Take your time in any relationship. There are many beautiful girls here, both on the inside and outside. When it comes to women, be careful. It's hard to describe, but the dating scene is so different than in the West. Here you are the catch. Just remember that. In the end, you are coming to the Philippines for the experience and not the materialistic. So think about what you want to do here. It's like a second chance at life. Do you love music? Maybe you want to jo join a band. Maybe you love to photograph, or maybe you want to learn a new language. The possibilities are endless. Bring a smile and a good attitude when you are here. But the most important is to bring the attitude of acceptance and realize 
you are moving to the East with a way different culture, a different way of thinking, a different way of approaching life. Yes, there will be times when you get frustrated and you feel like banging your head into something hard to end the pain of unlogic and weirdness that you see, but instead just laugh it off. Just bring a mode of acceptance when you, when you come here, because it's really the only thing you can do. If you end up in a group of foreigners that constantly complain a bitch all day about the Philippines, leave that group. Because it will not take long before you start hating the Philippines if you stay in that group. Remember, there are many foreigners that come to this country and absolutely love it, while others leave after a few years and swear they will never return. Mm-hmm.